Just going to talk about open source and feature film production. So um, I'm just going to sort of put a bit of context to my background just so I can sort of say where I've been and where I've sort of come from, just so we can get into the discussion here about the cameras and why I'm interested in particularly open source. So um, I'm a cameraman. By chance, I happen to be the cameraman and what they call a DOP, Director of Photography, for Last of the Summer Wine, which was obviously filmed in Homefirth. So uh, I'm fairly familiar with the area. I had a good five years doing that. It was a great job, on a sidetrack, because the cast was so old, our hours were nine till four every day. So for a director of photography working on a feature film that's normally 16 to 20 hour days, it was heaven. So anyway, it's just a bit of a different thing. And, and it was good, it was good fun, and obviously got to live in the area while filming. So, um, so my background's kind of cameras. And then I ended up working for a company called Technicolor, being in charge of their digital front end operations, which is um, looking after what they call tent poles, which is um, just, just to use the buzzwords, is that they're Hollywood features that are shot in the UK. So I was looking at looking after films such as Captain Phillips, Jupiter Ascending, um, tra uh, Trance, uh, Argo, uh, all those kind of films that you're familiar with in the cinema because everything transitioned from film to digital. This isn't news really, but it was a big deal for cinematography and 24p production sort of back in the day. It kind of was a bit of a shift. So they needed people like me to look after the media, look after the rushes, these digital cameras, these sensors, all that kind of thing comes into it. Arri Alexas, Sony F65s, that, that's the world that I was in for a number of years. And then um, I kind of left that a little bit because I just wanted to take a break. I had a, bit, I had a bit of a career break, and I found this camera here. It's called an Apertus. The as they are claiming, the first open source digital cinema camera. So my interest in the Axiom camera was the sensors. My interest is in color science and getting the best pictures. Now, you're probably familiar with different types of camera kit is what I've learned is like a locked IP. It's a locked system. It's closed. So if I want to shoot with a Arri Alexa, I have to rely on their color science. If I want to shoot with a red, I have to rely on their color science. But with this camera, I've got access to everything, all the sensors, the sensor information, the voltages are very important. How I can set up a camera to best get the best response for our dynamic range and our picture quality. So Coming from that whole kind of feature background, I'm just putting that so I can put into context what, what I'm sort of trying to, to do here with an open source camera that then lent me to think about the whole workflow, the whole pipeline, the whole ecosystem that supports a feature film. So hence the sort of thinking of what has open source or what can open source do for a feature film production, a big film. We looked at the Axiom camera. That's a camera that's been developed by them. I think it's a University of Vienna. They've got the, the funding and we've discussions here about getting funding and, and what have you for, for these projects. So they've done it and I liked it because I can now talk to this camera and the sensor and the, the, the innards of the camera and create my own workflow off the sensor. It might not mean much to most people but for what I do it's the colour science is the key to everything we do. It's the, real, it's the real sort of key to the door for, for, for shooting at, uh, at that end. So when, we took, when I started to research this, if we could just go to that ACES page, please. I came across ACES. Now, it's all going into a bit, of a, a bit of a side thing here, but this is open source software. This is developed by the Oscars. They have a scientific department, and they've now embraced open source so ACE is now being used on films like The Man From U.N.C.L.E. that I worked on and other films so that this software is available to all of the vendors to use for free. Now that Academy Colour Encoding System is very important because then that now means I can get the best off of the sensors. Now if I'm talking to the sensors in an open source fashion with open source processing capabilities I've now got much more flexibility and control over those pictures. I'm not relying on another company's IP or their closed system to deliver the images, which for us opens up the, all the dynamic range and all the color skin issues. There's a, there's a lot of issues with digital sensors that you, do, you don't foresee here, but when I do a grade or a, what we call a DI, skin tones off. Uh, the, the, 
each RGB and the colours, they have an inverse proportional effect on each other. So you've got too much green, you've got too much magenta. You, they, they, the, the opposites end up becoming prominent in the image. The more control I've got over the sensor and how it portrays those images, the better they're going to be and the better quality they're going to be. That's the, that's the implication. So we've gone into... You can see where I was going. I sort of find, found the camera. I got into that. I found that as open source. I found that this was open source. So I started to dig a bit deeper and thought, well, why can't I do the whole production pipeline? Why can't I go into the whole IT infrastructure that's required to support a feature production, which is things like RAIDs, cloud storage, uh, a whole kind of IT backup. There's a lot of media. I did a film called um, One Direction 3D. And yes, I did have to listen to that band for four nights in a row, and it was terminable. And there were lots of screaming girls and lots of mums and dads and all the usual thing. But there was 100 terabytes of data a night. So I had a whole suite, a whole army of people. I was, I was, I was kind of in charge of that whole operation. You can imagine I've got 400 terabytes of live spinning disk storage in 2012, which then was a, a, a big deal. It's kind of shrunk a bit now. How do I look after that? How can I create that into an open source world? So then I start looking at GPU, CPU speeds. I've got to process these rushes. I've got to go through that whole kind of infrastructure to deliver my rushes on time. And it's led me to start thinking, well, I've got software and hardware. Now, that's not new to open. It's new to me to understand open source and to kind of put, put, put that all together. But the software, where it's all locked into the IP, I can now run kind of CineLab software. So if you can just click on that magic lantern tab for me, please. Uh, again, I'm not too sure how familiar. I've had to just sort of self-teach myself all of these different bits that are available. Magic lantern is open source to Canon. It's really some software, so you could backwards engineer a Canon, so you can do raw photography better. It gives you more options. And that's free, and that's available to download, and that's, uh, that's open source. Things like Blackmagic software and others, they're locked. So they're, you have to sort of dance to their tune a bit. Well, these guys, they're kind of releasing the, the, the ability to be able to do this yourself. So you can just click on the next tab, please. So naturally, I've started my own company, Open Source Cinema UK. And here we are, Twitter feed from this morning. So uh, keeping it as up to date as we can. But it's, it's, it's kind of getting open source cinema. Is there actually any relationship between open source, software, hardware, sensors, cameras, IT, GPUs, CPUs, um, all of the kind of paraphernalia that goes around a workflow and a, and a digital intermediate, a DI, can this all be open sourced? If it can, especially with cloud and other things, then there's, a, there's another sort of unlock to, to that world of, of providing media services and backup services and, and feature film services to those, to those people. So open source cinema here, if we just click onto the next tab, please. You can see that there's companies like Blender, Adobe are adopting open source. It's, it's one of these kind of funny things that's becoming a little bit of a buzz thing around the industry. But like me, I'm not too sure that everyone's fully aware of, of what they're trying to achieve within the open source kind of banner, because it, it seems to me to cover too many broad brushstrokes is it free? Are, you, are we all supposed to work for nothing? The, the, the chap did his talk earlier. You know, you've got, got to earn a living. We've got, to, we've got to pay the mortgage and the rent and all the rest of it. But this company here, Blender, were going bust. So they decided to open source their whole IP. It was the only way to keep alive. And, and they've made a very big success of it. Magic Lantern's another example. You can just click on the next tab, please. Thanks. And here we've got hardware solutions. It's all sort of very much early days in, in the world of feature filmmaking, this is. But the camera, there's control boards, there's, there's other parts of the uh, paraphernalia. Just that next tab, please. And here's just, uh, this is just some examples of some press that's going. Sorry, just the next, the last one. There should be the black magic. That's it. And just taking it sort of, a, uh, sort of around and, and back out again, this company, Blackmagic Design, have made hundreds of millions of dollars selling cheap bits of kit for, for, for gluing together a film production. And they are now addressing this with Arduino boards. So then there's this kind of bespoke, it says it build customized camera solutions. So they're already seeing that there's a need for this sort of card that previously would have cost you, say, 350 quid, they're now selling for 125, so they're, they're halving the price. And that's kind of 
kind of where I'm coming from as a, as a discussion. Is that I'm, I'm already doing it, I've already shot with the camera. We got the very first world first delivered Axiom camera. If you go back to that Axiom tab, please, just at the beginning. We got the first one delivered so that we could test it and run it and, and put it through its paces. We're now in the sort of color science design stage, and I'm, I'm taking very much a front foot approach to it. I want to shoot films, I want to shoot big productions, I want to open source it, and I want to create an environment of clouds and raids and GPU, CPU, render farms, all based around that kind of open source ethos. And I do understand, or I'm sort of thinking, it is a bit of a broad brushstroke, but is open source really? Is it more of a case of you're opening certain bits and then you'll make it easy for others to, to use other bits? Or are you just kind of implying that we're kind of giving you a bit more than what someone else would give you. These are a bit more, uh, you know, large key to the door, so to speak. So that's, that's very simply, I mean, it's not really too much of a thing. It's more about that film production, and that's where I'm coming from. That's my background. That's what I've been involved in. And I personally, like a lot of people, just got that thing going where I kind of want to do this, and I'm kind of working it out and researching it and seeing where all the all the bits may lie. We've done a tremendous amount of press. We've done quite well. If how I'm going to make a pound note out of it, I have absolutely no idea. At the moment, I've um, um, lined up with the University of Portsmouth. I'm teaching cinematography there. That's only happened in the last couple of months. And trying to get even 50p out of them is like getting blood out of a stone. So it's I'm kind of working out that I'm just going to have to do this on my own and, and kind of buy the kit and figure it out and, and, and develop it and then see if there's someone out there that kind of gets it the same way as you do and then gives you that opportunity to, to push it onwards and forwards. I hope so. Uh, I'm not crowdfunded. I'm looking for any, anything more than that. But I'll, I can go out and shoot this stuff and I know how to do the workflow. And that's kind of where I'm at with it today. So tomorrow, I've got the camera and... What I'll be showing through the workshop is, is a workflow, taking a raw image from the sensor, showing you what a raw image looks like before it's processed, processing it, putting some colour science on it, and, and giving those that, that are going to come tomorrow a sort of a flavour of, of, of what the theory and the thinking behind open source for film production is, and how I'm going to try and put that into practice. Um, it's a lot, there's a lot of it. You go into grading and, and, and all this kit, but like, like I said, the One Direction film, there's 100 terabytes a day, you know, this stuff needs looking after. And, and, and open source could be that thing, BIOS, motherboards, um, all, all the sort of hard disks and clouds and all the rest of it that come with that kind of workflow, as we call it, is, uh, I think it's ripe. I think it's a, it's, it's a good thing. It might take a few years, but you never know. We might, be, uh, we might be shooting open source feature films in the not too distant future. Um, and that's all I've got. That's it. <laughs>